What do you think about changing kicker here to misses today? I think they're going to be looking at that position. Uh, will they make a change? I don't know. You know, is that why the, the Lions choose to go for um, uh, these fourth downs when they go across the 50-yard line? It looks like there's no hesitation to me. So I, I see a lack of confidence. That's just my opinion and observation when you look away from just really what's happening in live action. Uh, when when they're being this aggressive on fourth down, uh, especially it looks like there's no hesitation when they cross the 50-yard line or they're somewhere in a short down and distance. Um, that that play's already dialed up. You look at the offensive co coordinator, um, you already see that uh, coordinator of Ben Johnson. He's already, you know, they're, they're conversating. They already have that game plan. Um, that's going to be a critical piece for the line. I mean, look through the, at the scores through the NFL, okay? Uh, there's This is an opportunity year for the Lions, and they're going to need it from all areas, offense, defense. They got to get more takeaways on, on defense, but – the, the special teams is going to be critical for this team, and it's going to cost them games this year. Is either going to win or lose them, I would say, at least three or four games uh, based on just the closeness of the games. Players have jumped from team to team. So you don't really see blowouts. Uh, you know, you may see a one here or there, but, you know, it's coming down to these these extra points and, and field goals. Can uh, Jason Hansen come back? <laughs> I always think Jason can kick. So he, he, he could be like the Brady of kicking. I know he played 20 years or whatever it was. But uh, Jason, 50 yards even now, I think Jason is still good. You know, would he come back now? The Lions wouldn't bring him back. We saw Eddie Murray um, when Dallas brought him back. Uh, he's already pretty much was retired and ended up going on winning the Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys uh, and, and actually saving their season. So I, I never put it past them going and find a veteran kicker or finding someone uh, that gives them a little bit more confidence in what they have right now. Ant-Man, you got a question? Um, yeah, I have. Um, you mentioned that we should be a little bit concerned by the defense at the minute. I mean, 12 months ago, we saw, you know, against Baltimore, against Minnesota, they could not defend a two-minute drive. They allowed teams to move on the field very quickly. They didn't really seem to have a clue what they were doing in regards to it. And then today, they've got the exact same problem. You know, they were defending a pitch, you know, all, all they had to do, you know, you can give up just a field goal and you can at least go to overtime and they blew it again. That's a full 12 months that has gone by and there seems to be no improvement there whatsoever. Should we be worried by this, that there's, they still seem to have the same problems all this time later or can it be put down to injuries and lack of form and whatnot? Because it seems like it's a problem that has just not got better at all. Some will point to the injury uh, of Walker. They'll point to the fact that you, you have Hughes who's in. Um, and then there just seems to not be cohesiveness in the secondary. You know, I've been very surprised at the play of Jeff Okuda, who, you know, you know he's been playing fairly solid uh, for the most part. Uh, I, that, I, that what I can see, you know, given the vantage points that we have. Uh, and then the, the linebackers seem to be covering better. Uh, yeah, they give up a few plays here or there. Most most secondary units do. But I, I just feel a difference for some reason in this defense. I feel that there's a lack of confidence. I don't know if a lot was placed on the fact that this pass rush that they were going to have is was going to be the be-all, end-all and create so many problems that, you know, really isn't there. You, you get one sack, and, and that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, this is a team that uh, with the Lions that they have to figure out a way to be able to be aggressive, to not be, see liability, and definitely not lapses in coverage. And we've seen when they come out of halftime, I won't say that there's adjustments, but they're playing the exact same team they played in the first half and how they can dominate so much in one half of football and then give it all back in the third quarter and then you're fighting in the fourth is becoming really habit. And if, if I'm concerned, I'm looking at that trend more so than anything right now. What is it that we're doing at halftime that is causing us to all of a sudden go to sleep offensively and defensively, allow teams to get back and then click, all of a sudden something turns on because you're doing something to hit a reset button to then all of a sudden put you back in a commander seat, but then you're, again, falling back into something. Uh, so there, there are some things I think they're going to have to look at both on the coaching side and personnel side, but also, you know, how do they, they really manage this this team and, and get over some of these, these humps that shouldn't be costing them games like today. 
Is this a must-win game Sunday versus Seattle Seahawks? The Lions lose; they're one and three. If they win, they're two and two. What do you think about the Sunday's game, Herm? Um, I don't think this is a a a must-win as much as they they have to continue. They got to get better on defense, and they got to keep the momentum offensively. If they do those things, and I, I and why I don't get into the must wins and what may happen, if they do those things, this team will win football games they're supposed to win, and they won't lose the ones that they shouldn't lose. And then along the way, an opponent plays bad, you win those games because of your consistency. I don't know if if they really believe in that other than when they're playing aggressive. It seems like everything goes out of the window. They're not thinking as much as – it looks like they're thinking when all of a sudden it, it's something changes. And uh, so Seattle becomes a critical game, but I don't think it becomes the be all end all for their season, but it will do a lot to determine really what needs to happen before they play another game and go into the break. Mark. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on DJ Chark? I know DJ Chark's getting a lot of criticism lately. I think a little bit of it is, is unjust. I, they were going to him early. I seemed like he got a couple nice plays, a couple nice first downs. He was in the game. And it, it seemed like they kind of got away from him. I know defense maybe schemed to him a little bit more. But what's your take on him? Do you think there's a little bit of um, urgency with him right now? There's urgency definitely in him. I can see it even in his his, his route running. I could see it in just his posture. And, uh, again, it takes, as a, as a player, if, if I look at totally different things. And I always tell people when I'm watching the games, they, I know they're looking at the excitement. They're looking at some of the stuff that's happening. So I'll, I'll give you my real quick take on him. I, I see him on the outside looking in. I don't see him feeling as if he's a part of the unit. He's part of the progression. He, he looks at himself as a clear out. Um, there is some doubt that's cast whether or not he is that guy. I know you look at Cleef Raymond. Uh, and them starting to possibly look at mixing him back into the passing attack because there's just, they're just not getting any return with DJ Shark. And it's not all him as much as how do you, you build around him? How do you get him involved with the plays? Leaving him out as a single receiver, and often when he's in the bunch or he's in a, 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 a double set, he's typically the clear out or he's somewhere. He's not the primary target. And not that he has to be. But you, you have to give him purpose to be out there and then also a reason for the defense to have to respect him. And, and right now his confidence is diminishing, in my opinion, after each game and after each lack of opportunities. Uh, they're, they're not, they're, to me, it doesn't seem like there's, no, there's anything being done to build him up as much as just kind of ride him out until they figure out what to do with him or whether there's a change that they're going to make. And it's unfortunate. Uh, because if, yeah. if they could get him to, to play up to what his potential could be, given his size, I, I think it opens them up to a different type of team in short down and distance. And I also think it opens them up to a different type of team in, in the red zone in terms of options. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I feel because of this touchdown today, um, we've kind of forgotten that there were good areas in this game as well. I think we're all very frustrated with what I'm, I mean, what you saw from this team today and was there anything that you saw that, you know, was really positive that, you know, that we should take going forward? Because obviously there's something you can take from every game that's a positive, adapted moving forward. Is there anything you specifically saw for them today that was really good? Yeah, not not to, to, to you know, <laughs> be a, uh, one of those persons, but, uh, you know, I see that this team can play really good football in the first and second quarter and, and that they're ultra competitive. They're very focused. Uh, I see that there is a developing piece that happens on the third quarter, but you know, this team knows how to fight back. I, I see that they accept challenges when they're challenged and when they are in a position where they have to actually react or give up, they react, they respond, they, they go after it. They don't run away. Uh, that's a positive. I, the, cons the, the concerns I have are defensively, you know, when a team is as poor as the Minnesota Vikings were on third down, but your offense struggles too, there's a problem that's happening in there because the penalties are keeping them on the field. It's not the conversion. The team isn't doing it. So you look at the penalties, the penalties kept them in drive. It gave them 
60 plus plays. It wasn't because they earned it because they, they didn't. The stats show that offensively with the Lions, it's how do they get better on third? You can't be better on fourth than you're on third down. I mean, it just it, that shouldn't happen. Right? And you should be put in a position like that to where you have to constantly leverage your fourth downs to keep drives moving because you're going to face teams that aren't going to give you those opportunities. Uh, so I did see that, that this team still knows how to score. I think the offense is real. I think the running game definitely is real. Um, Jamal Williams, kudos to him in terms of his contribution. DeAndre Swift uh, still hobbled a little bit with his injury, but came in, made a few bursts here and there in some plays. But it's still, I felt their running game was strong. And uh, I think they can ride that for a while. And they can also be dominant with the pass, especially in a control style. I just don't see a big play type offense right now. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, uh, I know we're talking about the positives, but that's a that's still a little bit of a concern. I just don't see the dominance. I don't see the vigor. I don't see I just don't see the fire that we need from him. You know, he scores a touchdown, but I mean, other than that, that that's about it. But he's going to be vital to that third down piece for this team. Yeah. Do you think Herman, like, like about TJ Hawkinson, do you think they've completely like they're starting to phase him out of this offense. Doesn't it feel like that? A little bit I think they're, they're – yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, no. like I know it's early and stuff like that, but I just feel like they're kind of – he's getting phased out a little bit. I think they are phasing him out, not intentionally, um, but it's happening. They need to pay attention to that. I think uh, offensive coordinator Ben Johnson – as to figure out a way to keep him involved. And like I said, even if you target – T.J. Hawkinson should be targeted eight times a game, even if you go two times a quarter. I mean, that's not – if you think about what he means to this team, that's not asking a lot. Uh, if if you can target your wide receivers uh, 10, 15, 20 times in the first quarter and then definitely getting those type of touches in the first half, he's got he's to be a part of that conversation. And right now – I think that's a missing link. I think that's a missing area of opportunity now for a second straight week, maybe even three weeks. Uh, TJ's got to do himself some favors too. He's going to have to make touch, tough catches. He's going to have to create a uh, distance between his defender, even if it's not there. That's where the confidence in the coach and definitely the confidence of Jared Goff is going to come in and throwing to cover wide receivers. Uh, if we haven't seen them win a lot of contested plays, uh, we see them running open. What happens if you can't get open and you got to have guys come up and make plays? Uh, so there, there are some concerns uh, that I have. But uh, ultimately, with TJ Hawkinson, uh, phasing him out is not the way to go. you got to figure out a way to get him in. And never make it about one play, one instant, one moment in time in a game. When this is a moment that a coach has to make a decision, yeah, you, you have to take accountability for the decision that you make. That's the position that he's in as a coach. Uh, taking responsibility for it is is fine, but being up by 10, being up by 14 and having to come back, I think there's going to be more than just your head coach that has to take responsibility for that. While he may pass some of the responsibility to his assistants and then the assistants are putting it on the players because they're on the field, then it means that there's some responsibility that the team itself has to shoulder as well. Um, would I have made a different call than Coach Campbell at the end? Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to ever play that guy at second guess. I second guess on this one based on what my observations were. You got a you got a team that has some injuries. You in, on your offense and defensive side, you you really seem to not really have a lot of answers uh, for the the Vikings when they get going. So here's a chance for them not to get the ball back. So fourth down, I I'm if I'm gonna go for, it, I'm going for it. I'm, the field goal is like number three on my list. It's not my top choice, and I think that's what he's kicking himself for because his gut was telling him either punt and play defense or to go ahead and go for it on fourth down and try and take control of the game. Minnesota's out of timeouts. And uh, that's the that's the decision there that every coach, every head coach goes through, and it won't be his last one. That, that I can assure you. 